Uh, again, I'd like to thank uh, Eva and the rest of the GPM EMEA team for putting this event together. I am pleased to be talking with you today. I'm going to be taking you through a very quick tour through our product ecosystem that Joel and Eva alluded to earlier. Uh, I'm not going to get into too much of the specifics on the ins and outs of all the products. Others will be speaking to those. What I will be discussing is just giving you a broad overview and some of the benefits to our partners and share some ideas on how to commercialize a number of the products that we have. Again, my name is David Smythe. I have been involved in business development, management, and consulting for about 20 years. Uh, I have run a Prince2 and PMI consulting practice with a boutique portfolio project management firm in Ottawa, Canada, uh, which is Canada's capital, encompassing a number of different industries, including healthcare, aerospace, log uh, logistics, and aerospace and defense. Uh, as well. Uh, previously, I had worked with APMG International, so I'm very familiar with the uh, training partner process, uh, working with a number of leading authors. Currently, I live in Toronto and I am married with one young son uh, who is getting ready for daycare right now, so I'm in a different room and that is why my video is off as the, the Wi-Fi is a bit, uh, a bit uh, unreliable where I am. So as I said, we're going to be walking today through the ecosystem. First is our training, which is based on our award-winning P5 standard. P5 stands for product, process, people, planet, and profit. Uh, so that is our PRISM course. We will also talk quickly about our certification and certificates. We have our tri-level program that Joel talked about, our GPM, B, S, and uh, M for mastery, as well as uh, our skill-up program sorry, program, which is new to us. And I will also discuss our assessments, the PSM3 assessment as well, uh, that gives a great road view and overmap for your organizational sustainability ideas and contributing to your ESG programs, as well as GPM360, which Peter Milson will be going into in more detail uh, later on. Again, if we look at our training courses, the first is PRISM, which is Projects Integrating Sustainable Methods. It is based on the P5 standard that I spoke about and puts a great emphasis on the alignment of benefits, value, and change delivery within an organizational strategy and, and principles. And when we talk about P5, we're talking about people, planet, profits. So it integrates different areas such as HR practices for diversity and inclusion. It goes into things such as local procurement, making sure that you are lo uh, procurement, procuring locally as Joel's example of the project in South America that was flying people in uh, from all over the world. You wanna be able to uh, reduce emissions by having people uh, or having your procurement as local and reduce transportation costs as much as possible but also discusses specific business areas such as business case development, uh, management of benefits, making sure that the project consistently makes economic sense, both locally to the community and to you as a business. Uh, one of the things that differentiates our courses is that they are based largely on the adult learning model, which creates a deeper understanding. So we blend traditional instruction, uh, we, we place uh, a great deal of emphasis on case studies, simulations, and project and business plan development. Uh, as you can see the fact on the right, our GPM courses have won a number of international awards and, uh, and are delivered, uh, they've been delivered over uh, 100, 100 countries globally to this point. Okay. As I said, we have a three-tier certification program. The first, uh, the PRISM course leads actually to the GPM B, which is the knowledge-based exam. And I will point out that with the GPMB and taking PRISM, we do have a recognition of prior learning that shortens the, the uh, length of the exam. So if you have, say, a PMP from PMI, if you have a PRINCE II uh, practitioner or an IPMA certification, that makes the exam shorter. Uh, so yes, the GPMB is what you would uh, achieve at the end of the PRISM course. Then we move into 
the specialist and master, those are actually competency based. So those have, uh, those are administered directly with GPM. You present a case study, then we evaluate the case study. So what you're able to offer your clients is a clear career path, more so than just a GPMB certification. You're able to provide a clear career path for people moving forward in their sustainable project management career. And as you can see, uh, we have over 17,000 GPMBs worldwide, as Joel mentioned. That is a large, uh, a very large cohort of people that we are starting with, and uh, eclipsed PMPs first three-year numbers by about 300%. So it's significant. Uh, the time is right, and we are definitely growing and moving in the right direction. Okay. As you can see, uh, some of the testimonials. This is from one of our partners in a uh, new partner in Canada. Partnering with GPM has helped fill the gap for our clients as we work to create transition, transformational change. Um, and what it really does is it gives your clients a new, uh, something new and innovative to take to the clients. Um, this can also increase your bottom line specifically. and uh, and in a very large way, you will be seen as being on the cutting edge of working with, with clients. You're able to bring uh, a large number of young people into your potential client base. And the value of that is if you're getting a number of young people in their 20s and 30s who are looking at a sustainable career, then you're able to work with them for 20, 30 years potentially as clients working with you throughout um, and, and a continued revenue stream. Okay. Skill up. This is one that we are particularly proud of. This was established in 2020 as a way to establish uh, skill development in a number of different uh, developing countries. Uh, we have an advanced program that is designed for high schools, small colleges, uh, non-skilled labor markets, and is delivered through a two-day intensive workshop. We actually recently did, uh, did one with the University of Toronto in, uh, in Toronto, my hometown, which was very uh, exciting for us. Our goal is ambitious for this one. Our goal is to train upwards of a million people over the next 10 years. Uh, we have uh, got a decent start, but we think this will be uh, like a snowball effect. Once it, it starts to go, it's gonna gain a lot of momentum. And this is another area um, that you can, that will help with your ESG, it will help with your marketing. One, uh, one ATO we're actually working with in the US right now, what they are looking to do is use this as a potential for their community outreach. So for example, for every, uh, they've recently launched a uh, paid for community membership. So for every hundred people who sign up for their monthly membership, they will contribute 10 courses to say a high school uh, at no charge for skill up to develop those uh, practical skills that high school university students can use. As I said, we recently did one, uh, a class with University of Toronto. And as you can see, the students, uh, people plan and profit approach was explained very well. Uh, and I think the key here is pledge, uh, the, the second part of this, plan, planning management is a life skill. I could see myself applying the principles learned in almost anything I do, whether they be classes or projects. So that's a great uh, quote from a student. Uh, uh, somebody's gonna take this into university. Somebody's gonna take this out into the world. So we're very proud of, uh, of Project Skill Up. Sustainability assessments. This is key for an organization to really have an understanding of strengths and weaknesses. And one thing I'd like to emphasize is when you're speaking to clients about this, the key is really telling them that you're going to be working on strengths. Through my experience, at least in North America, whenever the term assessment comes up, most organizations tend to shy away because they don't want to be told what they're not doing well. And what PSM3 will do is really place an emphasis on strengths. Um, keep that, you know, so they can build confidence in what they're doing. What we're really doing with um, PSM3 is identifying where certain areas of, P, of uh, the P5 domain, so for example, low procure, local procurement or HR, uh, diversity and inclusion. 
what is the importance of that goal within the organization on a scale of one to five, where they stand on right now as far as uh, whether there are three, whether they are getting where they want to go, and then you're developing a roadmap for how to get there. Ideally, ideally P the PSM3 is a three-tiered solution. You have your initial assessment, which is typically about five days, where you would be interviewing key members within the organization for one or two days. Then you would be writing a, you would be taking that information, gathering, writing a report for two, for a couple of days, and then doing a last presentation for the fifth day. Now, often that can be a standalone, but ideally, what you are doing is you're creating an action plan where for say the next six to 12 months on a consulting basis you were going in and helping create the planning and actions to move them from say a three on the organizational capability model to a five to help them fill the gaps for what they're trying to do this provides a consistent strong revenue stream for your organization and then the third aspect would be the final assessment so they've done their initial assessment to see where they are. They've then taken six to 12 months to improve through actions and consulting. Then finally, a remeasure of where, they, uh, of where they've been to where they are now, okay? There are a few different ways you can do this. There are uh, trainings where you can do these yourself, or you're able to work with GPM experts directly under the umbrella uh, or under a contract of your own, okay? GPM 360, which Peter's going to go into, speaks specifically uh, to individual projects. So whereas PSM 3 is overall organizational, P GPM 360 is specific to one project. Uh, and Peter's going to go through into this in more detail, but your organization create, can create value by speaking or working directly with organizations to declare the project green. Now this not only uh, hits the checklist for having sustainable items through P5, but it also becomes a very strong marketing tool uh, that you can, that organizations can show themselves as meeting their ESG requirements, uh, showing good corporate citizens and a way to engage a lot of uh, younger people and uh, who are care deeply about these. As you can see here, here's some testimonials from consultants who have gone through our GPM 360 class. And uh, from various parts of the globe, we have one from Canada, US, as well as Malaysia. Uh, what you're finding is people who are very involved in project transformation have found that the training uh, really supports that transformation and found this course to be extremely valuable. Okay. All of our courses, all of our assessments are rooted in our, our self-developed resources, the P5 standard for sustainability in project management. We also have uh, a few years ago, uh, in 2009, a very well researched with uh, you know thousands of participants providing input into our insights into sustainable project management, as well as our sustainable project management guide, which is uh, translated into a number of different languages. And the P5 standard and the insight into project management, they are, sorry, they are uh, downloadable from our website. So I would encourage everybody to download those and become familiar with them. Okay. As uh, Joel talked about, we are a social enterprise. As a partner, we pride ourselves on being very interactive with our uh, ATO partners. So whether that's helping developing marketing plans, helping with joint. Uh, we're consistently working on uh, tweaking and identifying areas of our own strengths and weaknesses and adjusting to those and so that uh, we can have a, uh, an organization that delivers for you exactly what you need to help to deliver to your uh, to your clients. Uh, as Joel mentioned here, some of the organizations that have worked with us before and have benefited, and again, our regional offices. Uh, one of the things I'd like to point out is that while we do cover a number of geographies, uh, we are not a big bloated bureaucracy. We're a small and nimble organization. We work very well together. All of our employees have 
international experience, so we're familiar with different cultures. So if you were a, an ATO in Poland that was doing work in Latin America, you would have a contact uh, Monica, who would be able to help you familiarize with the culture of that area, or if you were in uh, Malaysia looking to do business in Detroit or Toronto, we would be able to help you uh, create opportunities and uh, follow through with those opportunities to prevent, uh, sorry, to provide value to your clients. And that's really it. I was wondering if there are any questions, and if not, I will turn it back over to Eva. Okay. Thank you, David. If there are no questions, I invite you all uh, to the short break and we start uh, five past two Polish time. So we have like eight minutes break.